You're listening to the Music Interval Theory Podcast with TC and Frank. Fantastic that you've tuned in again. Today, I want to talk about what we call the three step process of composition and why you should have a process in the first place. So let's jump in. For many years, I didn't follow any process. I jumped right into Cubase and wrote bar after bar, section after section. Sometimes the results were as expected, but most of the time, the tracks developed an uncontrollable life of their own. And that's not a joke. And this felt like gambling to me. This all is not necessarily a bad thing, but what really annoyed me was not being in full control of what I was offering to my clients, the service. How are you supposed to build confidence in your skills if you don't know what you do? It's not a healthy way to picture yourself this way and also your musical career. Oh no! So at some point, I saw the need to structureize and organize my process of composition to repeat the successes. Makes sense, right? And by the way, if you write music as a hobby and don't want to pursue a professional career, that is great. Still, having a proper process can optimize your working time so you can focus on other things as well. It's just a matter of working smarter. I already talked about the importance of sketching in another episode, and I will link to that episode in the show notes. Sketching is one of the three steps in that process we will dive into, namely gathering, sketching, and then developing the ideas. So let's touch upon every step separately. One. In the gathering phase, we collect all kinds of musical ideas that might be useful for the sketch, such as melodies, harmony, rhythms, maybe just a vertical structure or a motor, maybe even just a bunch of intervals. And I do understand that this can sound a bit abstract to you right now, but believe me, the intervals are a fantastic starting point for inspiration and getting lots of ideas down quickly. It's completely up to you how much material you want to gather. We will start a feedback loop that will lead to even more ideas once you've found something that works. So please don't be afraid of any wrong ideas. In fact, there is no such thing as a wrong idea in the first place. The worst thing that could happen is that you won't use all the material you've gathered. That's it. This step is mainly about emotional decision making. When you start composing, you should have an idea in mind already. What is the story? What do you want to say? Is it a love song or the main title for the next DC vs. Marvel show on Netflix? Whatever it is, whatever materials fit into that emotion should be written down. We collect everything that could be helpful to create the actual music later. Little building blocks that we can put on the canvas and move around in the sketch. We want to organize those ideas a bit more. That's the sketching phase. So let's bring the elements in order, create repetitions and contrast. Technically, we define structure and architecture, but emotionally, we start telling the story. 
shape and describe your main characters first. You might have recognized that the orchestral music you keep hearing plays around one central motif, explicitly this one. That all creates musical storytelling and it even makes your life as a composer easier. Also, don't be afraid to go back into the gathering from here as you will come across more interesting ideas. That's the feedback loop I talked about. And this feedback loop is very fruitful and a fantastic source of inspiration. So gathering and sketching work hand in hand very well. You might have noticed that many composers write a suite before they go into scoring the actual scenes. Now that's a very similar process. It's a huge gathering and sketching all at once. Although nobody forces you to write a sketch or suite, it's very beneficial. This will save you a lot of time and even mental calories later. So let's see if we can use our musical motif even on a major scale. <laughs> hey, it works. Who would have thought? <laughs> would you please get back to the topic? After you're happy with the sketch, it's time to flesh it out. Three. So let's orchestrate the ideas. We take the sketch, and help it transform into a full piece of music. We want to decide about the instruments we want to write for, and we can even add more things around the sketch, like sidelines, decoration, doublings of notes, and so on. The three-step methodology is a proven and most practical way to structure your process of composition. It gives you a lot of freedom and full control at the same time. Maybe some of you want to interfere right now and say, I don't need a process. I always reached my goal without any process. First of all, that's great to hear and congrats to you. <laughs> but let me assure you, jumping into the development from nothing is actually an uphill battle and very complicated as you have to deal with different things simultaneously. So here are just a few of those things. What is the melody? In what register does it appear? What's the orchestration around it? Is there a chord progression below your melody? Do you need to follow a timeline like a script or a scene? If you went through the gathering and sketching, almost all of these questions are clear and answered already. So you have made the big problem into many small ones. And that's way easier to tackle and you will get to results like this way quicker. Yeah, so that's musical storytelling. And as I've told you, for the most part, I didn't follow any process, right? And it took me ages to finish a composition. Sometimes, well, I didn't even finish it, because I got frustrated. I never really understood how some composers can crank out a ton of music every week so consistently, until I figured that it might be better to establish a robust process that I could follow. And maybe that also sounds familiar to you. Let me quickly tell you why separating the gathering and sketching from the development is so beneficial. Essentially, they occupy different parts of the brain. Gathering and sketching are emotional procedures while developing is a rational procedure. And you can't use both parts simultaneously. Oh no! Just try it and you will see that you can make decisions about whether or not something fits into a musical context quicker and even more accurately. Don't mix your logical decision-making with your emotional one. It will only slow down the overall process. Here's a quick test for you. What is 13 plus 9?
Now please tell me your answer. And also please tell me how you felt during that calculation. <laughs> well, I bet you didn't feel anything. Well, at least I hope that you are feeling entertained right now and maybe even intrigued or motivated to create a better musical life for yourself, right? Well, why not start today? This was Frank, best always, and see you in the next episode. This podcast is powered by the Music Interval Theory Academy, your resource for getting clarity and confidence in music composition and orchestration. See you inside at musicintervaltheory.academy.com.